Hello, uh, welcome to today's prologue class. In today's class, we will see how to represent graphs in prologue and how can we write a program to find out if a path exists between a given start node and a end node. Uh, first, we'll consider this graph, uh, which is a directed graph. Uh, we'll use this directed graph as our example. And as you can see, uh, in this graph, we have a link from A to B, but we don't have a link from B back to A. Uh, then we have a link from B to D and so on. Uh, now this graph we can represent in prologue using this eight fact. So we are using the predicate um, link, uh, the relation link, uh, which says whether uh, there is a path between whether there is a link between there whether there is an edge between the two uh, nodes so here we have a link from a to b and hence we have this fact link a comma b and then we have a link between a to c and hence we have this fact a link a comma c and so on so using this eight fact we can represent this given directed graph now as you can see uh, in this graph we have a path from A to E because from A we can go to B and then from B we can go to D and from D we can go to E however there is no path from E back to A so so now how can we write a prologue program to find out if a path exists between a given start node and an end node. Uh, to write this program, we should first realize uh, that if start node and end node is the same node, then there exists a path from the start node to end node. Because if the two nodes are the same, then we have a path from that node to itself. So that is the first statement we are making and the second is that if the two nodes are not the same then if we can find out a next node which is an adjacent to the start node that means a link exists from the start node to next node and and then there is also a path from the next node to the end node so path next node up to n node is true if this is the case then also we can have a path from start node to the end node so now based on these two statements we can write our prologue program uh, from the first statement we can write this fact which says that uh, a, there is definitely a path from a given node to that node itself so path node comma node is true so from the first statement we get this uh, fact and from the second statement we can write this rule recursive rule where it says that we have a path from start node to end node if we have a link from start node to the next node and from next node we have a path up to end node so from the second statement uh, for this part the check that a link exists from the start node to next node is done via this part this goal in the recursive rule and the check whether a path exists from next node to end node is done using this second goal in the rule thus this is our prologue program uh, to find out whether a path exists between a given start node and an end node. Now we can, once we have this program, we can run different types of queries. So we can run queries such as, uh, is there a path from A to E? Uh, the query, the prologue query for this question would be, path a comma e and if we execute this 
query we will get the return value as yes a path exists from a to e we can also run queries such as which nodes x are reachable from a so the query for that would be path a comma capital x now when we run this query our prolog will return to us that one possible x value for x is a itself because we know that path from a to a exists and then if you press semicolon a prolog will return to us another answer which is um which is uh, x equal to b um and this answer would come up because of this rule and then again if we press semicolon we will get one more answer uh, which is x equal to d and like that we will as as we keep on pressing we will we, as you keep on pressing semicolon we'll get different answers for different possible values for x and if we see the pattern we will actually uh, enter into a loop where it returns the value x equal to a x equal to b x equal to d x equal to e x equal to f then it x equal to a and then it again repeats b d e f a although i have not written it here uh, after b it would be d e we'll actually enter a loop here where we will keep on printing a b d e f a b d e f a b d e f a and so on so why do we actually enter this kind of a loop let us try to understand that and for that uh, since a is since the path exists from a to a itself we have the first answer x equal to a next when we press semicolon uh, since b we can, from b we can reach a uh, we will get, also get the answer x equal to b and if we press semicolon since from b we can reach d uh, hence from a we can also reach d and that would be the next answer that would be presented to us and if we press semicolon again from d we can go to e and hence our next answer would be x equal to e because uh, from a we can reach e now from e we don't have any further nodes and hence we will backtrack from e back to d and from d we have one more further path which will lead us to f and hence we will get the answer f and then from f uh, via this path we can go back to a and hence we will get the uh, answer a and now again from a we can again go back to b and hence we will get the answer b and this is the second time that we are visiting node b and if we continue like this again it will print d e f a and d e f a again b d e f a and that would this cycle would continue infinitely uh, one thing we can notice uh, is that our program is searching the graph in a depth first manner uh, to explain this further if you we have to consider this case where we have already expanded the node a and have generated and the node b and c and then further we have already selected b for expansion and we also have generated d so at this point in the fringe list we will have two nodes c and d however and as uh, we have two nodes in our fringe list c and d and we need to select the next node for expansion and as we just now saw our program actually selects d for expansion so between the two nodes c and d d was selected uh, that's because uh, because that's because our program is actually doing the search in a depth first manner d was the last node between c and d d was the later node which was generated but and this is the first node that has been picked up so our search is proceeding in the last in first out manner and what it means is that whichever is our deepest node that is selected first for expansion and that is nothing but depth first search
and since this is a graph uh, our search is also allowing repeated nodes and that's why uh, although b has already been visited we visit b again uh, similarly a was already visited we visit a again so we are allowing repeated nodes and that's because and because of this reason we are entering an infinite loop and now a consequence of this is that node c will never be visited we will always be visiting nodes like a b d e f a then again b d e f a uh, c will remain unvisited it will remain in the fringe list because the all other nodes that are generated are at a greater depth than c and hence those other nodes will keep on getting selected and b will remain in the fringe list and will not get a chance to be expanded or visited and hence uh, this node c will never be visited this can be uh, seen further when we give this query so when we ask the query whether there is a path between a to c uh, again our program will enter this infinite loop and and at the end our program will actually end with the error uh, stack limit exceeded that's because every call every recursive call will take up some amount of memory in the stack and as we get into infinite loop for every invocation little bit of that memory will be used and at some point of time uh, we will overflow the stack there will be no more memory left in the stack and at that time we will give the error that there is no more space in the stack uh, stack limit has been exceeded and the program will return with a error uh, we will see this when we execute our program this can be seen so how can we uh, prevent such repeated nodes so there are techniques like depth limited search or iterative depending search so those would be the solution to prevent this kind of uh, cases so that's all i have for the theory class here um, regarding the explanation uh, now let us see uh, this program in execution i will execute the program and show you, show you to you the results so first let us look at the program so here is our prolog program uh, the first eight fact are used to represent the graph and then we have the program to find out whether a path exists between a given start node and a end node so now let us execute this program and see the results okay let us look at the execution of a program so first i start prolog uh, then i need to consult the program that i have written i have written my program in a file called 10 path in graph.pl so i consult that path first now i can ask queries so the first query i ask is whether there is a path from a to e and it says yes a path exists from a to e then i ask whether a path exists from e to a and it says no a path do not exist from e to a then again i can ask queries such as uh, what are the nodes that are reachable from a and I'll, as i had already explained it would say that a is reachable from a um, then if i press semicolon prolog will search for other answers that are possible and it would say yes b is reachable from a if i press semicolon it would again say d is also reachable from a if i press semicolon it would next say that e is reachable from a if i press semicolon it would next say that f is reachable from a and again if i press semicolon it would say a is reachable from a and now if i press 
uh, up to this point if you have noticed is that our search is actually proceeding in a depth first manner as I had already explained and now if I press semicolon here uh, you would see that we again go back to B and then to D and then to E and then to F and then to A again and as you can see our search is now allowing repeated nodes and we are actually entering a loop and if I press keep pressing semicolon it would keep giving me the answers and as you can see we have entered a loop which is A B D E F A B D E F a b d e f and so on and if i press if i keep pressing semicolon it would keep giving me answers until uh, we run out of stack space so i'd like to end further progress by pressing a full stop and now let us try to execute the query uh, whether a path exists from a to c and as i had explained it earlier you would see that the, for a query such as this um, uh, we again enter this infinite loop that I had spoken of and because of this infinite loop uh, we will make, keep making recursive calls um, and for each recursive call some amount of the stack space would be taken away for that recursive call and as we keep making inf recursive calls infinitely at some point of time we will run out of space uh, and because of the stack overflow uh, we we will return with an error that stack limit has exceeded and how long you have to wait or uh, you may have to wait keep lock, keep waiting for some amount of time so that uh, the stack finally exceeds um, although um, for some machine it may return at a very short duration or in other machines you may have to wait for certain amount of time before the stack will overflow so let us start this query and as we keep waiting um, uh, now the search has entered uh, prologue has entered uh, infinite loop uh, it is not returning any answers to us and it's actually getting into that infinite loop and for each call it is taking up some amount of the stake space and as we keep making repeated uh, calls in the loop uh, we will at some point of time eventually run out of stack space and at that point of time we will uh, prologue will say that it has exited because of uh, the error stack limit exceeded and as you can see we already saw it here in our case uh, we had to wait for some amount of time but that finally uh, the stack uh, space is finished uh, there is no more space available for another further call as we had entered into this infinite loop and, and that shows uh, that our current program that we have written have some drawbacks uh, and we can see uh, we have to find out ways to prevent uh, this kind of a error situation and some of the solutions would be like def limited search or uh, iterative deepening search so that's all for today i'd like to stop here we'll meet in the next class bye